Hi everyone, it's Joe, otherwise known as The Little Bean on Instagram, TikTok, and now here on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the five bags that I regret buying. So if you're interested in learning more about why, stay tuned. So for those of you who are new here, I am a lover of all things luxury to include these bags as well as beauty. And my Instagram and TikTok accounts focus mostly on what's in my bag, reels and unboxings. This YouTube channel is designed to go into more in-depth review on my bag collections and also uh, create a community. So without further ado, my five bags that I regret buying. Okay, so the first bag we're going to talk about is the Samore BB. It's a recent purchase, one that I bought in September while I was in Rome on my anniversary trip. Um, so it is a beautiful bag. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the design. So this is a, I would say it's a small bag. I wouldn't consider it a mini bag. It comes with a back pocket here, lovely Vachetta details. It does come with uh, a crossbody strap as well. It has just one open area um, in the interior with no pocket and a magnetic closer, which I love. So in terms of why it kind of bleeds into the cons, I bought this bag while I was in Rome and I had actually gone into the Louis store in Rome to buy the Pochette Matisse East West. Um, and unfortunately, they didn't have it. I think honestly, I bought it just because I wanted to buy something, which is an absolutely terrible idea and an absolutely terrible reason to buy a luxury bag of this cost. And so I think this was an impulse buy. If I'm 100% honest, this was an impulse buy. And you know what else happened? I did not get the Pochette Matisse East West out of my head. It did not scratch that itch for me. And so I ended up having this. And for those of you who follow my Instagram and TikTok account, you'll know that I ended up buying the Pochette Matisse East West as well. I should have just waited and checked because I went to Milan after Rome and I didn't even go into the Louis in Milan because I felt guilty because I said, you know, I already bought a bag. Um, from Louis in, in Rome. I don't need to buy another one. Um, the Pachette Matisse East West was significantly cheaper in Italy than it was in the US. And I should have probably pursued that more instead of just buying something for the sake of buying it. So there's nothing wrong with this bag. It is beautiful. It is functional um, other than the Vachetta. But for those who aren't scared of it, like I would recommend this bag in a heartbeat. It is just really pretty. But it doesn't make my heart sing as Minx for all says like it just it's not one I like look forward to wearing it's one that I look at in my closet and I'm like oh man I should probably wear this <laughs> and will I sell it I don't think so I think I'm gonna see hopefully if it grows on me I think as the Vachetta begins to patina I will like it more too I think I really like that honey patina look and it's not quite there yet but do I regret buying it? Yes. If I went back to Italy, I think I would buy all the bags that I purchased except for this one. Um, this one just, I think, wasn't, wasn't meant to be for me. All right, the next bag we have is the Celine Small Boston. So this is very similar to the Louis Vuitton Speedy 20. It's almost the exact same size. I think it might be slightly slimmer, but overall very similar. Um, it is really pretty. It's very functional. It's got a zipper that goes all the way down on the sides, which I just find I love for these types of bags. Don't mind me. It's stuffed. Came with a crossbody strap. It has a um, pocket in there, which is nice. Um, the material on the inside is nice. It's like a brown canvas. It's really aesthetically pleasing, very understated. Like if you just were to see it, you would barely be able to see the canvas. And so it's a beautiful bag, but it's not going to scream um, as loudly with logos as say, you know, the, the Speedy 20. Some pros about this bag, um, it's very functional. The leather is treated. So unlike the Samora BB, like I never would have to worry about this um, in the rain. So why I regret buying it. So I bought this bag, uh, because I was heavily influenced by someone I saw on Instagram. I cannot think of the name of her account. It's like 
F-R-M-Y-N. I'll, I'll link it in my caption below. Um, her Instagram account is beautiful. She has a beautiful collection of Celine bags. And she had posted this reel of her pulling out like literally the entire world out of this adorable bag. And I just fell in love. This again was another, you're going to kind of see it in, in the theme of this. This was another impulse buy where I said, I want something from Celine. Um, I like the shape. I didn't have any speedy bags at the time. And I said, I would love this. I don't have any other shapes like this. But again, I didn't do, I think, enough research. Um, the one that I have has the crossbody strap, which again, the leather on the crossbody strap is very soft. It's really beautiful. I don't feel like taking it out, but it's in there. Um, and it clips to the two... Um, sides of the handles. That's the only thing I didn't quite love. A lot of people, this doesn't bother them. It's very similar to the structure for the crossbody on the Alma BB. Um, but for me, like I wasn't a huge fan of that. And this one is a great size for most people, but for me, it's just a little big and I'm never drawn to the size. Like I don't need this much room in my bags. So honestly, I don't have an idea of like why I don't love it. It has all the ingredients of everything I like, except for maybe the size. I just never gravitate towards it. I've had it now for a few years. I think I've worn it like three or four times tops. It's just not a bag that I look forward to wearing for some reason and again it's kind of like a it's just a preference thing it's actually a beautiful bag i've actually tried selling it um, a few times i'm just not sure like what a reasonable price is for it so if anyone's interested feel free to dm me or shoot me an email i'll leave my information in the caption below um, like i said there's nothing wrong with it it's just one of those things where for me personally I have so many bags in my collection now and I just don't want to keep having bags that I don't look forward to using. Okay, so the next bag is not a luxury bag, so to speak, so I am cheating, but I bought this. I'm going to be honest. I bought this again because I was influenced. I was influenced by, um, her name was, I think, Cherry Lux. I'll have to look up her information again. I'll include it in the caption below, but um, She's one of those cool girls and I wanna be just like her. And I saw um, she had a black version of it in her um, on her page. And I just was like, this is so cool. And it's not as expensive as many of my other designer bags. And it's squishy and it's a cute size, I'll get it. And so again, it was one of those, um, I didn't really do a lot of research on it. I just bought it. And actually it fits a good amount. Um, I did a what's in my bag reel on it. It actually, that reel did really well because I think people were just surprised as I was at, as how much could fit. Um, so inside here, it has a pocket. It comes with an extra strap as well as the uh, shoulder strap. Um, it has two sections that can fit a good amount. Um, and then it has a really nice, um, really nice satisfying clasp and no uh, pocket on the back. I think this is the, I want to say it's the 18. So um, in terms of function, it's a very functional piece um, because it has a crossbody strap. The size is perfect. I, I love the size actually, if it's my phone. Um, so from that sense, there isn't anything inherently wrong with the function of this bag. The reason why I don't use this bag, I think, is because of the color. It's got like a little bit of a yellow tone in it. It's, since it's all leather and it's this really soft, like beautiful leather, it really is just so buttery. I am terrified of color transfer. Like there's no way this is not gonna color transfer. It is just a plain surface. It's just waiting to soak up jean blue or you know whatever else. And as much as I love the idea of white or off-white bags, I just, I am terrified of this color in this material. Also like some of the wrinkles sometimes bother me. For most people, I don't bother them, but like for me, I don't know why. Like I bet I could probably steam them out, but I haven't, I haven't tried. So this is another bag that I'm looking at letting go. So if anyone's interested, um, just let me know. I have no idea what the resale value on these are. This is not meant to be a closet sale. <laughs> um, so just to be clear, it's just, uh, these are things that are on my mind of bags that I might let go. Okay, this next one might surprise you. Uh, this is my Chanel mini square. And I 
love the Chanel mini square. I have adored it on Instagram for the longest time. And anyone that I would see that had one, um, I just drooled over. I think it's just the cutest size. I love like this, just how pillowy the quilts are. Um, you know, it's the perfect mini bag size, yet it still fits a phone. It's got a zipper in the back, a little extra pocket here, the classic, um, I think it's called the Mona Lisa pocket, right? And this one feels like bigger than um, other ones that I've seen. So it's actually like a functional pocket. It can't fit a phone back there, but like a comb or a mirror. So in terms of functionality, it's it's a functional size for me. I think it's another one of those bags that fits everything I need. It does have a little bit of stretch, but I mean, it's a Chanel bag, so <laughs> I'm being careful with it. I never jam it to the max. I think in my what's in my bag reel, I did jam it to the max and I'm surprised more people didn't call me out on it because I would never do that in real life. Uh, so be aware, my Instagram page is not real life. <laughs> First of all, I'm never that organized. And secondly, I never carry that much in my bags, but it's fun to watch, right? The lambskin is, for me, surprisingly, I do not feel like I have to be very gentle with this bag. I, I feel like the lambskin is pretty hardy. Um, I know when I first got it, I was a little nervous because everyone's like, oh, lambskin, you gotta be so careful. But I haven't really, um, when I've worn this, I haven't really worried about it so much. For me, I think the only con that I have is the strap. Um, I have it tucked in here, but the strap is not um, adjustable. And for me, it's actually pretty short on me. And I am a petite person. Um, it is just on the edge of being a little short on me. So I can imagine that a lot of people who are taller than me or would have issues wearing this as a crossbody. Um, and I don't wear my bags as shoulder bags. To me, it's just not functional. They always feel like they're slipping off of my shoulder. Um, so I was just surprised at the length. Um, I, just, I just think that if I was going to um, invest in a bag of this much, I'd want it to be functional 100%. And so, you know, for me, it works for the most part, but I would say for others, um, this might not. All right, so why am I personally regretting this purchase? Um, first off, I will say that I'm probably never gonna sell this because it's a Chanel bag and now at these days, it's just worth keeping to see what happens. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's not that I hate it um, by any means. Uh, and it's a beautiful bag, so I'm not going to sell it. But if I were to go back in time and stop, you know, and stop myself from buying it again, I would because the color, um, it's a, it's a pretty beige, but it's just, it's a little, it's got like a little pinky undertone to it. Um, it's almost like skin toned in a way. And I just find that it doesn't match anything that I wear. <laughs> Or like, I never, I'm never inspired to wear it. Oftentimes I'll go through my closet and look at my bags and pick out a bag and then put an outfit around it. That might be weird. I'm a weirdo, but that's kind of sometimes what I do. And I just never do that with this bag or I'll have to like really think about what outfit I could put together with this. And I think if I had a bag that was like a light tanner color, like if it had more brown in it and less pinky skin tone undertones, I would, or if it were pinker and it was like a light pink bag, then I think I would wear it more. But because it's kind of flesh toned, I just don't ever know what to wear it with. Um, and so it doesn't come out often or I have to like wear an all beige outfit and really like plan it out. But even then, if I have on an all beige outfit, I'm going to want to put like a bag that has more like pop to it at times. So I just never, I never wear it. The other thing is again, the strap not being adjustable, even though on me, it works pretty well. I would just like it to be a tad longer, um, or be able to adjust it um, to be a shoulder bag, which I mean, I think I can do with this current strap on here. But again, it's just, I wish that it had a little more versatility um, for functionality of the strap. Okay, this last one, I know I'm kind of cheating. It doesn't really count as a bag, but when I shared it on my Instagram page, I did feature it as a bag. I added um, a crossbody strap to these little uh, handles here. And so you could technically wear it as like a mini bag or a micro bag. But this is the Minosk GM pouch. 
Um, so it's one of those that comes with the Minosk GM bag. Um, so in terms of design, it has um, a little zipper at the top and it's just an open pocket on the inside. It's got like a micro suede material and a nice pop of color in there. Uh, so in terms of function, uh, if you watch that reel, you'll be surprised. I jammed a lot into this little thing. And because it has these little pleats right here, um, it can stretch. Um, so I did pack mostly flat things in there, but um, it can stretch and hold a good amount. Uh, it's very um, unique. So for people that like to collect special pieces, um, I think that would be definitely a pro. It is really cute as well. Um, and you can use it like as an SLG instead of an actual bag. And if you're using it as an SLG, it's really functional. It's smaller than a mini pochette, so it's not as bulky. Um, and you know you have it and you can wear it as a bag or you could wear it as an SLG. So in that sense, there is a pro to that. I don't know what I was thinking, but I thought I could fit my phone in here. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but wait and look. So here is my iPhone 11 Pro and it should fit. I really think it should fit. Um, but the lining in the inside, I swear is like shorter. Like it doesn't go all the way down down to the bottom of the bag. And so when I first got this, I was really tempted to cut the lining out because I'm pretty sure I could fit my phone in there. But then I didn't because A, at that time I already came to realize I'm probably not gonna keep this thing. But also B, um, like, okay, so let's say I jam my phone in there, right? That's gonna be the only thing that I can fit in here. And then what's the point? I don't need like, a phone holder. I want actually something that I could fit other things in. So I didn't end up doing it. Um, but I was a little, a little disappointed that the phone didn't fit because I was so confident when I read the measurements that it would. If you're just looking for an SLG, this is, this is adorable. It's going to fit lipsticks. It's going to fit, you know, mini makeup or even normal size makeup, anything you want except for your phone, you know, and like super bulky items, it will fit and it will stretch. But for me, I have so many SLGs, um, so many. I have my list of my top five SLGs and this isn't one of them. Um, and I think it's really because um, if I'm gonna use it as an SLG, I don't need these handles and these handles are gonna get in the way. And um, for me, especially because I wear such small mini bags, um, you know, I don't, I, I want as slim profile um, of items as I can get. And because I have a pochette Matisse that I can transform or convert into a mini bag, there's no need for me to have this one. That one, the mini pochette fits more for me. Um, and so I would likely use that more in terms of having a versatility of a bag I could, or SLG that I can convert. Um, so I'm probably going to try and let this one go. Again, if anyone is interested, just shoot me an email or DM me on Instagram or TikTok. And I'm just letting it go because I have way too many SLGs. In fact, if you want to see my full SLG collection, let me know, but it would probably be like an hour long video. So <laughs> I'd have to think about how to do it. Um, so yeah. That's that. That wraps up my top five luxury or designer bags that I regret buying. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Did you agree with my assessments or, um, you know, are some of these bags some of your favorites, which is totally fine. Everyone has different preferences and what works for them and their style and their functionality. And um, I'd love to hear more about what everyone thinks. Um, let me know as well if you like this type of content. Um, originally, I was thinking of doing just bag reviews, but I think sprinkling in things like this where I show more of my bags at once is something that I'd like to do as well. Um, and yeah, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'd love for you to join my little group here um, and just continue to build out this community. So that's all for today. Have a good one, guys.